Ariana. Hello. Look who's back. Where have you been? Hell and back, but mostly um, San Fernando Valley. El Monte, El Sereno, Whittier, Compton, Long Beach, anywhere. I just keep it moving, you know? What's been going on in your life? Well, whew, had to take a deep breath for that one. Um, a lot of negativity, you know? Um, dealing with my um, homelessness, um, I've been getting jacked for all my stuff, like, you know? Literally my purse worth of stuff, cell phones, all my clothes, the only things I had on my back. On a daily basis, it's like, you know, I have to, you know, re-up on the stuff that I lost. But it's only materialistic, but as a female, it means a lot to me because I chose that stuff. You know, it was my birthday stuff, too. My birthday's coming up April 14. <clears throat> I'll be um, 29. So I, I read up on, like, jewelry, hygiene and stuff. So I don't know, I guess, you know, d doing with the gear that I get, like, you know, expensive brands, people scope it out and then, like, end up jacking me for it. Are you still using? Um, on and off, yeah. Crystal meth? Pretty much, yeah. <clears throat> you seem more... Uh... Relaxed. More relaxed now than you were last time. Well, like I said, the the jokes are over. The it's not immaturity. It's like like I said, I rather take, you know, life as a joke. But this time it wasn't a joke. This time I ended up getting really b badly hurt and I got beat up again. And um, he beat me very bad, you know, just for a cell phone too. And I, I literally had like a black eye with the green and purple, busted lip and. It was so traumatizing. I was going to commit suicide that day. And um, someone walked into my suicide scene and stopped me. His name was Matthew. And I um, said, what are you doing? And it's just that me and the guy had, you know, something going on. And just I was lying on the, on the sh shower floor, just rubbing myself up and down. Like, you know, couldn't feel my, myself, you know, feel dirty enough that his filthy hands were all over me that the day before of. And then he just tripped after smoking that fentanyl crap. And then he just beat me up for my phone. And it was just like, every time I looked in the mirror and I seen my black eye in my face, I just got flashbacks. And I just couldn't bear with it anymore. I was trying to commit suicide. I was gonna, if it wasn't for my friend Matthew to walk in, um, I probably would have been laid out with my wrists open. And it was just, you know, I don't know how guys can put their hands on women. Mind you, I'm pregnant. But um, a lot of people think I'm lying. I already tested and I, the two lines come up now. I'm three months pregnant from a dude in San Fernando. Who's the father? Jose. The guy that hit Some you? Mexican guy from Oaxaca, Mexico, um, in the Portinia Center, a homeless encampment in San Fernando, in Northridge, actually. Not the guy that hit you? Not the guy that hit me. The guy that hit me was actually my enemy. And like I, like I said, yeah, that bad that I, I kicked it with my enemy. I should have known I was playing with fire again. And um, I was just vulnerable at the time, and I didn't have nowhere to go. So I skipped on and, you know, got into an Uber, kicked it with him in an apartment building, and he smoked that crap and then just tripped on me. But, um, yeah, yesterday I was actually crying just down the road right here because there is this guy who was going to kick it with me, but and then he says, well, you're not giving up the pussy, so what's up? You know? And I like I was like... How disrespectful is that? You know, only because you don't give up, you know, you're one of, you know, he should have told me what it was and what it wasn't, you know. I thought we were trying to kick it, smoke, chill, whatever. But all to him, it was just, you know, getting inside, you know, between my legs. And it sucks because like, at times like this, when you're family, you would think that your family would try to help you, but all they say is go to rehab, go to rehab, go to rehab. To think they would try to understand you somewhat like, my question is, how are you supposed to grieve for someone if you just lose another one and another one and another one? And in a matter of 30 days, you lost, like, at least 15 individuals. I lost my grandma due to COVID. Remember the last time I came, she was alive. She died from COVID. I wasn't allowed to the funeral because my family said I was a disgrace to the family because I caused her enough hurt. And I literally cried because, like, she raised me from, like, 10 months born, mind you, till I was, like, 18. She was practically my mom. She took me in, and um, I couldn't go to her funeral because they said if I bothered to show up, um, they would call my PO and call the cops. 
if I bothered to show up. So they told me to save myself the humiliation and the embarrassment and not to show up. And she spoke for the whole family, which is one of my aunties. And um, it's just like, I don't even bother calling them anymore because like when it was the holiday, like Christmas, I called them just to say, I, you know, hi. And she goes, Ariana, why do you keep on insisting on calling? You know, you're not allowed over here on the holidays or at all type of stuff, you know? But last time when I was staying in a Salvation Army, it was her dropping off my Christmas presents to me. And now it's not even no Christmas presents. It's just a, just reassure yourself you can't even show up to our house type of stuff, you know? So it's like times like these when you feel like, well, I know I'm alone. I, on a daily basis, I struggle with trying to find out where I'm gonna lay my head, you know? Who I'm gonna run into on a bad note or on a good note. I used to be a very nice girl to all the stuff that happened to me. On a traumatization note, I just, I'm not used to people being nice to me, you know? So, sorry. It's, it's like coming from in here. I'm only human, I only, you know, shit, eat and bleed and cry. I can only hold it for so much longer. But yeah, when I do cry, I just can't stop because I don't cry on a normal basis. I don't like showing my weakness, you know? And it's like someone that I know that says, you're not hard, it's all the front. He says, you're soft as a pillow type of stuff. And I'm like, ouch, you know? Because let me tell you, I can handle an ass beating. I got chicken wing not long ago from, um, what was it, downtown or Burbank police. I got arrested for being under the influence of a controlled substance. And mind you, they didn't even Mirandize me. So their case goes to hell. I Googled it, I said, what if they don't Mirandize you? It says that they're, um, pretty much their evidence is, is no good, you know? It's incom incompetent. But um, I'm pregnant again like I said, and um, I plan to, to reunite with the baby daddy just to, you know, to talk about stuff like that. Cause he has a, a little like shed that he created himself. But um, mind you, it has freaking like power and everything. You know how they hook up the lights and stuff? And um, see what, what he's, he's gonna do for me. If not, you know, look for like resources for programs. I've been trying to get into one, but I really don't, want a program. I just want like my own apartment, a motel or something. Not some structured program that's gonna tell me. Cause mind you, I went to a program last time. It was called um, the Project 180, um, you know, Sun Valley one. I stayed there for five months. I almost graduated till the COVID outbreak happened. Half of the house caught it. And I thought it was a smart idea to go use meth and run off and kill my five months program. And um, AWOLD, just to go across the street in the trailers in Sun Valley where all the drug heads kick it. But I wasn't ready to relapse then because I entered there and I seen a guy with a pipe. As soon as I seen the pipe, I said, I'm not gonna throw away my sobriety like this. And I ran out and I said, I was gonna go look for a bathroom at McDonald's. And I went back to the rehab and sat there and cried for like two hours and they wouldn't let me in. They said, show us that you could stay sober for the next two days and then come back Monday and then we'll talk. And I did it, and then we talked. But then again, it's like a rehab, and it's full of all women. Mind you, I only kick it with just men, because women and I don't get along because of my pretty face. They get jealous and insecurities about their boyfriends or their homies. They, they, they know that the attention is like not gonna be just all on them, you know? But I can care less. I'd rather be ugly than pretty because pretty girls get it. Like, and like what are good looks good for, you know? modeling and movies type of stuff. I'm not an actress. I'm just a homeless female out here, you know, surviving. But I just feel like if it's not the cops, it's my enemies. And if it's not my enemies, it's me going to jail, bro. You know, I'm gonna get killed by somebody. And it's like on a daily basis, you hear news about like girls going missing and stuff, like gunshots to their head, pregnant or not, you know? And then I have my ex-boyfriends make comments like, oh, you're gonna end up just like the Brenda Paz chick was the MS snitch. And I'm like, wow, really? He's like, yeah, cause you talk too much. You run your mouth too much type of stuff. And then it's like death 
it lurks around you so much. I'm like, I'm not scared, dude. You know, on the suicide ideations, I'm trying to make it for me and my baby. I already feel like bad, a bad mom that I can't do it for my first son because my baby daddy and I do not have a good relationship anymore. We can't even stand talking to each other. He just throws me on my, you know? But like, oh, John needs mom, you know? Um, are you ready to be a mom? You should go to rehab. When are you gonna go to detox? Are you ready for a program, you know? Just pushing me and pushing me and pushing me instead of saying, so have you thought about it? Have you, you know, have you considered taking a program? Are you ready? Can you at least give it a try type of stuff, you know? Like try to, you know, boost me up there. Instead of he knocks me back down, you know? And I don't know what to do anymore. I'm a good person, I really am, but I've just been through so much shit. It just sucks. My smile, like by the end of the day, by when it turns dark, you won't see me smile until it turns light again. Because in the dark, this place is scared real. I almost got kidnapped out here by a paisa. I literally got a seat burned because he yanked me when I told him I wasn't gonna give him head for $5, you know? And I've been mistaken for an informant and been held, you know, captive and stuff like that. And then, you know, I had to engage in stuff that I didn't want to. And then, you know, I'm like hurting from my private area and like bleeding and stuff like that. But, you know, who's gonna believe me type of stuff, you know? I was asking for it type of stuff. Nobody asked for it, you know what I mean? No is no, and that's that. But like I said, in my situation, people take advantage of it. And you know, they'll, they'll be nice and be like, kick it, kick it, kick it. And then later they're like, oh, well, I smoked you out with this much. I fed you, I did this. What you got in change for me, you know? Because nothing's free in this world. You know, that's why I be careful who I kick it with. Try to make sure that it's gonna be, enough. you know, you're doing me a favor, you're gonna charge me later on type of thing. But um, I've talked to a lot of high school friends and um, apparently like, I have more people on my back than I thought I did. You know, cause I was off of social media since I got my, my couple cell phones robbed for me. I thought it was better to be without a cell phone, but like let's say three o'clock in the morning when you know you're in certain areas and then you're being chased by certain vehicles by myself, you know? It's just, it's a scary situation. It's those moments that I start to pray and I'm like, please God, like don't let me get, you know, hurt right now type of stuff, you know? I don't know why people do me the way they do. I'm, I'm just the way I am because of, you know, what I've been through. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it out there, man. It's, I'm, I'm still homeless, like I said. I just, I get with people like, you know, gangbangers or paisas and stuff. And they still, they, they're like so much alike, domestically violent, they're all just physical. And it's not cool, man. What do you think it would take for you to put down the drugs? Some support would be great, first of all. And um, guidance would be a, a second step for that one. And three, like, goals. You know, like a little plan, an action plan. You know, I've been in rehab. Like I said, I was there for like five months, but before that, I was going to D.D. Hirsch, mental health services. I'm not dumb, I just do dumb things, and while I'm under the influence, half of the time, I'm not thinking of what I'm doing. I'm just acting on impulse. Because I'm working with, I'm mad at the world because a lot of people do me dirty and I'm trying to get even type of thing. You know? Because who steals from a person who's already in the streets, you know? And the cops look at me and they're like, you don't li live in the streets, look at you, you're clean. So it's called a motel room, homie, or just boil some water in the hot pot, you know, and bird bath. Or the mobile showers, you know? But um, I, I just, I'm upset with myself that I've let myself get the way I am. Like, looks wise, I have like pimples. I have like irritations going on with my eyes. A lot of people smoking that fentanyl stuff. I did overdose off of fentanyl again. I shot up 30 cc's of pure fentanyl and they had to Narcan me three times right here in Skid Row. So my boy gave me it and I, he said it was G-Funk, but it wasn't crystal meth. 
and I guess I died. And I, I don't remember anything. I honestly don't. But they said they Narcan me three times to bring me back. And it's like, I've had more than nine lives. So obviously I'm here for a reason. And like I said, probably it's just to give motivation to those females that are out there doing the same thing. Because I do miss the hell out of Narcotics Anonymous, you know, but I can't be like faking the funk. Like, how am I gonna sit there and just pretend to like li listen to the message, but pretend that I'm sober? Cause you know, I'm not sober. And the meetings when I would go to them, I was sober, but with the support of my baby daddy. But now that me and him are not on talking terms, and it's always, um, do you have some money, John? And he's like, um, no, Ariana, I don't. I'm at work right now. Can you like hurry up? I gotta go type of stuff, you know? And the father of your second one is just somebody you just met? No, I was staying with him for like a matter of months. We were in a relationship till like, he dragged me out the tent like half naked. And um, I had to call out for help to one of my guy friends, Diablo. And um, yeah, I had to call out for help. And he's like, you know what? You keep on running back to him, Mariana. I don't know what to do anymore. That's the second time I rescue you. Like, if you go back to him the next time, like, I don't want to hear you yelling, you know? So I just dipped from that spot too. And it's like, I just look for a one woman man and all these men out here just want to have more than 10 females. That's how STDs get caught. A lot of guys like to offend me and say that I'm some type of hoe, that I'd be effing everybody and their mamas, but that's not true. I bet you that I can prove an STD clean test more than half of these females out here. Because if I do do my stuff, I do it with protection. No glove, no love, you know? But that's my problem. And then, like someone yesterday made a comment, says, damn, so it didn't make it with the South Sider, so you pick a wood? I'm like, fuck. Dude, that's so offensive. So I was kicking it, well, still am kicking it with some white boys, right? Mind you, I'm a sucker for white boys. I kick it with them. And, um, cause they're the coolest people on earth. They won't do you in. They actually have everything that, you know, you don't have and then like, let you chill with them and not tax you later and type of stuff, you know? They'll be like, oh yeah, let's chill, you know? Don't trip, it's on me, you know, type of stuff. Not the, um, I'll charge you later type of stuff. You know what I mean? And it's like, for him to say that, oh, homegirl said it didn't work out with the South Siders. You want to kick it with a wood wood. I'm like, wow, that's offensive. I'm a grown ass woman and I don't have to explain to nobody what I do or who I kick it with, whether the race or not, you know? I don't know what, what it is with racism, but that's like half of the negativity in this world, racism. And procrastination is another one. And three, the government. Did you notice all these viruses and stuff have been going out because it's I think the government's honestly trying to end civilization. First the COVID virus, and then the, what, the West Nile virus, and now the freaking influenza. Like, are you serious? And then like now they're making drones and, and freaking robots with machines on them. Like, I don't know what the hell the government's doing. But after Joe Biden <laughs> went president, it's a sick joke, <laughs> you know? Do you have any contact with your family at all? Absolutely not. I just saved myself from that hassle because every time I do end up calling them, I end up in tears. You know, because like one time I try to ask for my ID and I kind of make a prank on my aunt and I told her I was calling, well, I told my friend to make a joke call saying that she was calling from the morgue. <laughs> and my aunt took it very, very personal. She says, I am calling from the morgue. I'm just here to um, ask you to come in and identify the body. She's like, what? And then she's like, click. She's like, Fuck you, Ariana, I can't do this anymore. I was like, fuck you, dude, why did you do it? She's like, I can't do it. Call your, your aunt back right now and let her know that it was a joke. I'm like, no, fuck that, let her worry, <laughs> let her worry. So my aunt's like, you think it's funny? She, she like literally called the cops saying that I was like missing. And then I was like, oh no. So I called her and she's like, do you think it's funny? She's like, you think it's funny to say that you're calling from the morgue to identify your body? I'm like, but you don't care about me, right? Type of stuff. And then when it comes like that, like if you don't fix, your stuff with people and then you just let them die, that's your conscience being like, oh, I should have, you know, asked him for his, for his forgiveness of, you know, by, by doing this person dirty, you know? Cause when that person's gone, they're gone. Like my grandma, you know? My grandma from my mom's side also died from cancer. And then my little brother died from fentanyl. He was 25. He, um, he lived in Las Vegas. His name was Kevin Howard. Obviously he was dealing for some fool and, um, he had a bunch in his sock and it bursted and it went through his pores and he was 25 years old. I didn't get to meet him, but 
I had a very good relationship with him. I still go through the messages on, on, the, on my Facebook. And um, my Facebook is Sola Potrero, S-O-L-A. And then Potrero is P-O-T-R-E-R-O. That's my fake name, but yeah, that's my most recent profile. And my personal people get to, you know, hit me up on there. But yeah, I just barely got another phone thanks to my white friend. I love white people. White people are awesome. <laughs> my baby daddy's white. You know, my son's white. Come on now. Racism needs to stop sometime because if not, you know, like I said, I feel like there's going to be a race war one day. People are always making like stupid comments like F you, you at Mexican biatch. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like rude. And I literally got spit in the face by a black man. I only beat the, beat the black off of him. I beat him up. I swear I did. It was so disrespectful. If I had a dollar for every time I bit spit on my face, it's like the most disgusting, cruelest thing ever. It's like, it's, mm -mm. it's un uncalled for, you know? Skid Row is rough. Skid Row is rough. Life's rough, you know? And, and drugs are with it too. It just keeps the gnarly and the, and the J-cats and the weirdos and, you know, everybody belongs in one place and that's We're Skid Row. I call it Skid Hose for you, <laughs> you know? Tap, tap on that one, cash out later, you know? She'll take one for the team, you know? We'll talk about it later, you know, just don't let her hear about it. We'll, we'll speak about it type of stuff, you know? Just let her chill for a minute. She'll get it, you know? She'll get it with the program. You know what I mean? And I'm like, whatever. But by the end of the night or day, like I said, I'm the only one standing. G's up, hose down. I've never switched. And, you know, I run by myself, I stay by myself. And I'd rather be alone than bad accompanied. And misery love com loves company, and that's why half of these men are alone in this world. And I'd rather be single, ready to mingle, than be, you know, with somebody who's gonna you know, put his hands on me and, you know, lower my self-esteem. Because as you can see, I dolled up, besides the running mascara. <laughs> Speaking from the core, you know, my feelings and all. It's been tough, but, you know, I'm my unborn child. I'm just trying to get out the streets before I get hurt again. And that's all I asked for, just to get out the streets, you know, for someone to actually keep me on my toes, you know, some guidance, some support would be great. Because with the stuff that I've been through, like I said, standing over like, you know, El Monte Riverbed, just contemplating on throwing myself off a bridge. It's not cool, you know? Ariana, what would you say is the most important thing you've learned in your life, in your 29 years? The most important thing that I learned is that my, my grandma, as my guardian, wasn't trying to be strict on purpose. She was just trying to save me from the big, big world. If it wasn't for me to go against her word and like sneak out the house and stuff like that, I would have been inside the house, at home, not knowing what's out there, like the drugs, the party scene and all that. I would have waited till like after school. I think I would have been fine. But since I sneaked off and smoked weed here, drank the beer here, got my tattoos on, you know, behind my back type of stuff, I think I would have been fine, but curiosity kills a cat. And if anything, I would have been dead. It's just like, I just learned that the party scene is always gonna be there. The drugs are always gonna be there. Everything will always be the same. And the world is just gonna keep on going round and round and round. And you're the one that's gonna end up beat up, tore up inside, hurt emotionally and physically, you know? Because um, I was like 225 pounds like three months ago and I'm down to my 100s now. With appetite being gone, you know, smoking bowls and stuff, it's just, I wanna stop, but I kinda don't wanna stop because I depend on the drug to, you know, cure my multiple diagnosis type of stuff. And I know the heroin's not for me because it gets my depressions going and it's a sick joke. The come down is disgusting. So I just stick to crystal meth and crystal meth only. But hopefully if I get myself right, um, I'll be in a program soon. And yeah, for all those people that were asking for a follow-up, there you guys have it. I'll be fine, you know? I'm still who I am. Just a little bit more serious now. I'm not the you know, fun, jolly girl that was, you know, taking everything as a joke because like I said, joke was on me. I ended up getting hurt like really, really bad this time. And like my eye was shutting and I could barely see out. And I was just yelling, I just want my phone. And the cops are like, is that the dude that did that to you? And I'm like looking at him, I'm like, 
I'm like, mm. I'm like, I'd rather not say, I just gotta go, I gotta go, you know? That much fear, you know, that pumped inside of me because I don't know what his reason was. Under influence or not, I think people should know right from wrong. But putting your hands on a female is just way out. Just, I'm like, pull on, boom, boom, boom. Just like stomping me out to my head. I have knots everywhere. But scars are scars and you know, battle wounds, wounded warrior project, huh? <laughs> yep. And right. yeah. Well, Ariana, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you guys for asking for a follow up. I wish there you lots of luck go. with your new baby. Thank you. You're going to have to put down that crystal meth. I will. All right, Don. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.